Oh, I'm hoping that you can hear me. I don't have my, um, <laughs> I don't have my headphones, but, um, oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so sometimes we do these things and we're not quite ready. But I just wanted to hop here to talk about um, trusting your your intuition a little bit. And I wanted to talk about how when I made my career change. So today is, or this week, this month is my 12 year, no, I guess my 10 year, sorry, anniversary for opening this clinic here and 17 years in practice. And when I became a naturopathic doctor, it wasn't that well known. The profession, a lot of people would still say, what's that? Like they didn't understand what a naturopathic doctor was. And I can tell you that the career change was not an easy one for me to make. It was difficult to navigate that whole shift because I, we all have what's called core beliefs and we all have limiting beliefs and we all have shadow beliefs. And these, they're, they're all a little bit different. So core beliefs might be things that are in your conscious awareness that you, you know. Like you know that you believe that the world perhaps is, is round or that the sky is blue. Limiting beliefs are beliefs that you think about yourself that are that limit you, that keep you somewhat stuck. They're, they're not always in your awareness and, some, and sometimes they are. And then shadow beliefs can be referred to as unconscious commitments. They're, they're in the recesses of our subconscious mind and we don't actually know what they are. And the, the beauty is that once you bring them into your conscious awareness, then you can make change from that place. So you know that you have a shadow belief at play or a sabot whenever you're sabotaging yourself. So this can be if you're somebody who wants to lose weight, for example, but then you never follow the instructions that your uh, coach gives you or your clinician gives you. Or it could be uh, perhaps someone who, well, I'll just use my myself as an example. So I said that I wanted to leave my corporate career for a long time. And uh, I would never, though, take any steps to do so. And my friends would get really tired, like after a decade of listening to me complain, I'm complain and complain about my corporate career, they would be like, come on, Chris, like, leave your job already, right? And I never would. And I never knew why I wouldn't. And it wasn't until I did some coaching work with Nancy Levin, who I I think is, is really amazing. And I would encourage you to check out her work. Um, she, it, we did some shadow work. And basically, you're always going to do what you feel is safer for you, which feels more comfortable for you because change is, you know, it's going to stretch you, you're going to feel uncomfortable a little bit. And so for me, what came out of this, and this is years after I'd already made the career change, um, was it felt safer to me to stay in that, that position in a job that I really, I mean, I had two suicide attempts in five years in working in that environment. And it's not, I'm not saying that the environment was what caused me to want to end my life. It was multifactorial and then I can go into that in another conversation. But right now I, I wanna just finish explaining this, which is that uh, it felt safer to me to stay there than to risk rejection looking for another job because rejection is my core wound. My core wound stems from being adopted. And so when you think about it, that is um, a very traumatic experience, if you will, to be in uh, a certain environment in utero 
to be bathed in a, and, and also to be bathed in uh, certain hormones in utero. Uh, Dr. Gabor Mate, who recently has a new book out, actually interviewed me for his book. I'm not sure if I made the cut or not. I'll have to, I haven't had an opportunity to read his, his book yet, but um, he was the one that uh, in, in these conversations that I had had with him pointed out that perhaps I wasn't uh, brought into the world in a way that was, you know, super joyful and, and, and full of lots of excitement, for example. So anyway, I'm sort of going on a tangent here. But my point is that whenever you think you say you want something, and then you're not able to do it, it can be not just because you don't have enough willpower. It, it, it can be not because you you know, you can't just muscle your way through. There really can be something like an unconscious commitment or a shadow belief at play, which is there to try to and designed to keep you safe. But the problem is that you don't need to be kept safe anymore because the reason that you formed that belief in the first place may have happened as, as perhaps in my case in utero or shortly thereafter because the babies aren't having a lot of conscious thoughts, right? And in, in the case of trauma, we, we make these commitments that will we'll never be hurt again, we'll never be um, put ourselves at risk, we will. And, and so then this shows up in our lives in different ways, shapes and forms, like learning to never speak up, learning to never say your truth. Um, so the reason I wanted to mention this piece is that I see a lot of of patients in their 20s and 30s and 40s even and many people are struggling with making a career change and I just want you to know that and I'm going to leave you with this for now and I'll come back and and pick up on this conversation soon uh, and I'll just leave you with this one question that I want you to reflect on for yourself which is if money didn't matter. So if we just take money out of the equation, understanding that money is just energy and that we, if so, if we just, and that's a whole other thing to look at is your story about money, your beliefs about money, all of these things play a role in your ability to generate wealth for yourself. So if money didn't matter, so if we just took that off the table, what would you be doing? What would you be doing with your life? And I reflected on that question for a long time before I actually listened to the whispers of my soul that were speaking to me around getting this and making this career change to become a naturopathic doctor. So I'm not saying you all have to be naturopathic doctors because you don't. But what is your soul whispering to you? What is your soul calling for you to do? In what way are you meant to potentially fulfill your highest purpose here? And, and forget about what all the critics say. Forget about what your parents might say. What is it that you are called to do? And, and I'm not saying to quit your day job. Don't quit your day job right yet. But just reflect, just sit with the question and journal and let the answers come and keep at it and keep asking that question repeatedly for at least a month or more and see what comes for you. And I'll finish with this, that I went to a conference with Louise Hay. It was called Movers and Shakers. It was uh, how to sort of get your story out in the world. It was through Hay House Publishing, actually where I met Nancy Levin for the very first time. And I, um, I, I mean, it was, such, it was such a thrill because Louise Hay herself greeted every single person. She, I had several conversations with her. She was so humble, so available, so open, so willing to give of her time. There was no ego or pretense whatsoever. And she got up on the stage and she put her hand up 
gosh, I think this is my thing is really long here. I, I feel like I'm going to get cut off. Anyways, I'll, I'll just say that she said, put your hand up if you feel like you're a has-been, like your ship has sailed, your time has passed, you've, you've missed your opportunity. And half the room or more put their hands up, including myself. At the time, I was 44. Put my hand up. And then she said, put your hand down if you're less than 64. So most of the hands went down. And she said, I want you to know that I didn't start this publishing company until I was 64 years old. Now I'm 87. And this, my 87th year, is my best year. This has been my best decade of my entire life. And I'm sharing this with you. And she shared this with us because she wanted to inspire us to understand that as long as you're breathing, you have an opportunity to start. You're never too old to start. And that is a limiting belief. The belief that you're to this or to that to not begin is what's limiting you in your life. Now, I'm not going to say say that it's always the easy. It's always easy, right? I mean, it, it wasn't easy for me to go back to school at 33, to high school at 33, and then on to university, and then on to naturopathic school, and to finish up approximately 39 years old and get started on this second career. It really was not easy, I can tell you. But now, looking back 17 years later, it is easy, actually. <laughs> now I'm glad I did that. Now I'm super, super happy that I made that choice. I mean, there's times, I'm not going to tell you that there's not times when I might look, think about, gosh, where would I be if I had stayed at HSBC? Where, you know, when I look at my counterparts and where they are now, I think, boy, oh boy, right? But the only measure of success in life is not how much money you make. That is not the only measure of success. So... Another good book to consider is Success Intelligence by Robert Holden. He is uh, another author through Hay House. Uh, lots of promotion for Hay House here today in this conversation. Louise Hay and Nancy Levin and Robert Holden. I don't know who published Gabor Mate's book, but anyway, I'm going to sign off. I got I got patients here, so I had somebody have COVID and they weren't available, which is uh, giving me this opportunity to hop on, so... Lots of love to everybody. Remember, reflect on, if money didn't matter, what would I be doing with my life?